has more. Kevin. Yeah, before stranger danger ever existed, kids in Oakland County would stay out and play until the streetlights came on. Parents felt safe and secure. But in 1976, that would all change. I was 12 years old and lived in Bloomfield Hills. All of the parents in our neighborhood were in a panic as kids started disappearing from what were considered very safe areas. We all walked to and from school in groups, escorted by adults, and everyone would speculate about who the Oakland County child killer might be. Oakland County is the wealthiest county in Michigan. It is now, and it was then in the 60s and the 70s. It's a place where people aspired to. It was the growing center where people wanted to go with their families. During 13 months, in 1976 and 1977, four kids were vanished from sidewalks and held from four to 19 days and then their bodies were tossed by public roadsides. My brother was the first victim of the Oakland County child killer. Mark Stebbins was walking home. He headed home. From uh, the American Legion at Livernois and Nine Mile. And never made it. Four days later, his body was found at, uh, behind an office complex at 10 and Greenfield. I am Jill Robinson's sister. She packed a backpack, got on her bike, she was missing from December 21st. And then left. And then they found her the day after Christmas. Saw something red in the ditch. Christmas is something that Jill was really looking forward to. And it was Jill. Christine Mihalik was my sister. Christine Mihalik called her mom because she wanted to walk up to the 7-Eleven. And her mom said, OK, but be very careful. It was 3.30 in the afternoon. Her mom allowed her to walk to the 7-Eleven. She wanted to get a magazine and some candy. She disappeared on January 2nd, 1977. I think it's worthwhile. We have to find the girl. We need information to find the girl. Christine was kept for 19 days. My dad was traveling for work at some point, and he sits down, and he you know, was on the airplane, and he sees a, the tie tack that this individual has on him. My dad says, oh, you must be with law enforcement. He says, yeah, I work for the DOJ, you know, here in Oakland County doing a little bit of work. So my dad starts telling him the story about the case and whatnot. And this individual with the DOJ looked at my dad and just point blank said, you know what? You got a bunch of sick in Oakland County and it is one of the wealthiest counties. And all I'm gonna tell you to do is pay attention and watch your back. And unfortunately, there would be one more murder. Timothy King will share new video and new interviews from his case tomorrow at 6 p.m. Oh, man. Now, we want to share a number that people can call if they have any information or tips to report to investigators. Here it is. It's 833-784-9425. 833-784-9425. But in the meantime, this... Every time that this is revisited, this has got to be so hard uh, for the victims' families. Uh, why are, have they come forward again now? Yeah, it really is. And uh, what's different this time is the way this is being presented. Uh, they have podcasts now and a docu-series. Our producer, Jeremy right. Allen, has put this out on so many different platforms that more people are going to see this in more places mm -hmm. than ever before. The families think it can be solved if the right person sees it and gets that information. There is DNA that exists. If they get the right name, they can match it up. And there's information and video that we didn't realize we had in our archive. Right. So we're putting Absolutely. it all together. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. We okay. appreciate it. Make sure to join us on Wednesday at 10 o'clock for our primetime special on this unsolved mystery featuring never before seen video and new interviews. That's Wednesday night.